Welcome everyone to this uh, webinar on creating uh, a really successful portfolio, photographic portfolio. Uh, of course, this is sponsored by Moab Fine Art Papers and by our studio, Les Picker Fine Art Photography. So today I'll walk you through my uh, comments about how to create a portfolio. And then at the end of, of that presentation, I'm going to actually show you uh, specific examples of portfolios from simple ones to uh, more elaborate ones, uh, including the ones that we produce in our workshop. So uh, without going any further, let me just get you into the presentation and give me a moment while I get it to play. Okay, so here we are. We're talking about secrets to a successful portfolio. Uh, I'll just mention before we start with the specifics that my assistant, Bob Boyer, and I have been doing portfolio workshops for years now with dozens and dozens of photographers. Um, I've photographed in National Geographic for a number of publications, magazines, uh, etc. Uh, and Bob is a studio photographer, but also uh, and a fashion photographer and also a master printer. So with that as background, let's talk about what actually is a portfolio, because there are some misconceptions about it. I think the key thing here in this definition, if you will, are, are two points. One, concise, the word concise. It is a concise collection, not an expansive all-encompassing collection. And second of all, it represents your best work. We're going to talk more about that. So it, what are its purposes? Well, obviously, you know, it should engender pride and, and uh, reflect the pleasure that you take in your hobby or in your profession. Actually, portfolios, aside from hanging your photos on a wall, your prints on a wall, uh, a portfolio offers you another opportunity for home decor, if you will, in the sense that uh, a portfolio looks great on a, on a coffee table or on a desk. Uh, so keep that in mind as you think about doing a portfolio. It's a wonderful way to showcase your work to family and friends, but also it is really terrific for landing us, um, editorial assignments with editors uh, to maybe land a book contract with a with a publisher, and also to help you land clients. Uh, another great thing about a portfolio, and, and, and really a major thrust, if you will, is if you are interested in having a gallery exhibition, whether you're part of an existing exhibition or a solo, uh, really a portfolio is absolutely critical to that, so to securing that. So, um, couple of important points about portfolios in terms of the opportunities they represent. It really gives you a sense of setting a marker in your body of work saying, here's where I am today. So you can assess your body of work right uh, uh, at this point in time. Now, if you're 30 years old, it's going to be different when you're 40 and 50 and 60. But by setting those markers with a portfolio, you really are able to assess uh, to say, here's who I am as a photographer today. It also will help you chart your future direction. Let me give you an example of that, a personal example. I've been shooting for well over 50 years. I've been shooting uh, uh, DSLR, well, SLRs and DSLRs uh, throughout that time. But I, when I developed a portfolio, and I have several portfolios, by the way, but uh, several years ago, I was developing a portfolio and I realized that, you know, I'm done with the days of, of taking 10, 12, 15 images at a time. I was looking for a more thoughtful. I realized I, I, I wanted to slow down my photography. I wanted to focus on my black and white work as opposed to color that I used to photograph for magazines. And I was able to use that that assessment and charting my future direction. And I switched, actually. I sold all my DSLR equipment, cameras and lenses, and went to medium format uh, photography. Uh, because that in, encouraged me to slow down. Uh, you don't have that fast um, uh, shutter rate. So instead of 10, 12 images a second, I would 
focused uh, and slowed down my photography. And that was really, really has made a difference in my, uh, in my career tra tra trajectory, if you will, my direction. Uh, portfolios give you an opportunity to learn the most difficult part of photography, and that is self-editing. Uh, self-editing can be agonizing to people, and indeed it should be, but once you learn self-editing through this process, it will help you uh, in your future work enormously. A portfolio gives you a chance to work collaboratively, and I'm going to talk more about that in a moment. Uh, many of you may think, oh, I don't want to work with someone else on a portfolio, but we're here to maybe have, challenge your thinking in that regard. Uh, portfolio is a great way to celebrate your passion, uh, and I don't want to belittle that. That's actually a kind of a neat thing to take the time to look at your work and really celebrate what you do. So let me start with a few thoughts and then we'll, we'll get into the nitty gritty of this. Creating a portfolio is difficult and it is not something that you do in a day or a week or perhaps even a month. This should be, by all rights, a difficult process and it should take some time because you have to stop and think and give it a rest and come back to it. So it should be thoughtful. The most important part of this is, you know, you think, oh, well, you know, the, the, the portfolio is what I'm looking to have. And yes, that is obviously what we all want out of this uh, process. But in a way, it's secondary. If you can learn in this, in this whole process the concept of self-editing, the, the, the actions that are necessary to go through the self-editing process, I think you'll find that uh, you've accomplished two goals, if you will. You've learned the self-editing. You've also got a beautiful portfolio uh, to show for it. So how do we get started? It's critical to start with your vision, what you would like to see in a portfolio. And by that, I mean, what are your goals for, for your portfolio? We talked some of it uh, before, the goals, whether it be a, a, a coffee table book or, or an editorial entree, but it's a way to gauge your own artistic accomplishments. That's, that's a possible goal. Are you looking at this instead to be a coffee table book and you're happy with that? Or, as I mentioned, editor-publisher meetings or meeting with a gallerist. All of these are things that you need to think about what really is the goal of this portfolio. Critical to starting. Or, as I mentioned, prospective clients, if you're a, a portfolio photographer, a, a portrait photographer, or a, or a, um, a family photographer, whatever, uh, is that your goal to land prospective clients? So, the next step is in doing this really is to develop a focus. What is it? When people approach us about a portfolio, they're often thinking in terms of, oh, well, I'll just show my 10 or 20 absolute best images. We're not saying don't do that. What we're suggesting here, and again, when I say we, I'm talking Bob and our and my philosophy on this is, uh, to challenge you maybe to think in a different direction than just 10 or 20 greatest. Have you worked on a project or story? Let your portfolio tell it. Uh, one thing that I uh, mention, I tend to live near an Amish community. Uh, and we live in Maryland and Pennsylvania has uh, uh, Amish communities. Maybe you're, you're documenting their work or perhaps you're a wildlife photographer and maybe you want to do a, a portfolio on African wildlife. What we're suggesting is try to focus that. Instead of a textbook photos of a lion here and a giraffe there, etc., maybe if you're doing it on elephants, you might do elephants of the Serengeti and in a concise amount of images, tell the story from maybe the birth of an elephant through the struggles they face to perhaps their death or even the poaching issue. So you may want to tell a story and, and that conciseness, that focus will really make a, a, a huge difference in the quality and the impact of your portfolio. 
Cohesion simply tends to be more powerful than a wide-ranging set of images. If when you do this, uh, you go through this process and you find that the, you've got this image that you absolutely love but it just doesn't fit into the story you're telling, that's no problem. Put it aside, create a collection of using Lightroom or whatever software you use and keep it for a future portfolio. Portfolios aren't a, a, a one-shot game. Uh, I have multiple portfolios that I use for different purposes. So getting into this process, learning the self-editing, and then moving images that don't quite belong but you love, maybe that'll form the basis for a, a second or third or fourth portfolio. So getting into the nitty-gritty now. What are the initial steps that you need to, to um, do? Number one, mindset. This process will take time. This process will be frustrating at times. This process will cause, create internal conflict, cognitive dissonance in you when you're choosing between this image and that image. Take your time. Portfolios tend to work better with fewer than 25 prints, folks. We're, we're, if you can get it down to 10 to 15 prints, so much the better. We're talking about impact here. We're talking about dynamism here. We're, we're th that is what counts, not the number of prints. 25 prints, when you go above that, it can tend to be unwieldy. People have to handle these, and after a while, they, they just, after 15 or so, it, it just gets to be too much. We urge you to do this collegially. We urge you to find other photographers or other artists that can, you can work with to help to create your portfolio and to help them perhaps create theirs. Look for people you respect. Look for people who are not necessarily in your genre of photography. They don't even have to be photographers. Some successful portfolios are formed with a photographer and, a, and an oil painter, for example, because he or she may have a good sense of composition and color and context. These are all important. Develop a good team like that. And when we say this, we're talking about maybe three other people, four of you all together. Above that, it starts to get unwieldy, but three or, three or four people working together are really form a good, tight, intimate group that results in a, in a very successful portfolio. Get together with them in a meeting. Make sure you have a, an adequate amount of time and Share your vision for this portfolio with them. If they're working on a portfolio, hopefully they'll share theirs with you so that you all know where you're heading, you know what your goals are for this portfolio. Select 40 to 50 images. Now, if you're a beginning photographer, 40 or 50 images may sound a lot, but if you have a body of work, Believe me, 40 to 50 images, it will be a struggle <laughs> to narrow it down to just 40 or 50 images. But that's your challenge. Take your time, start narrowing down to 40 to 50 images. Once you've done that, take that collection of images on your laptop on, uh, to this meeting and share that with the people. Say, here's a story I want to tell. You remember my goals for this. Here's a story I want to tell, uh, and I need your feedback. We're not talking, folks, about post-processing feedback. You have to assume that if you're doing a portfolio, you're already conversant with Lightroom or Photoshop or Capture One, uh, any of these, uh, Luminar. Uh, you're, you're comfortable with some po post-processing program. What you're looking for here is feedback on the content. Do my images that I've selected have enough drama in them? How would I sequence them to tell the story that I want to tell? That is the kind of feedback. And we find, by the way, in our workshops with four people that the level of discourse is up here. It's really a high level of conversation and feedback that happens. It's, it's actually uh, very rewarding. Key thing here, listen, don't defend. Don't, if you find yourself saying, oh, well, yeah, but I got up at 4.30 in the morning to take that image of the sunrise. If you find yourself saying that, stop. 
listen, ask questions. Why, why do you feel that this image doesn't belong in this portfolio? Uh, what about it is out of sequence? What would you recommend? Those are the questions to ask right now. Now, look, you're the final arbiter of, who, of whether an image stays or goes. That's your choice. But listen and, and take notes, if you will. Listen to what people are saying. Uh, and that's the key thing, to, to just get as, encourage as much input as possible. Once that takes place, go back uh, to your, your home base and cull from 50 down to 30 images. Difficult again, do it. Just focus on it, see what, based on that feedback, what belongs and what doesn't. At the next meeting, which we recommend be several weeks later to give time for this whole process to, to uh, unfold, Go back to them and see if you're on the right track with those 30 images. Get, have, help them, which are the most impactful, which have the most drama to them, whatever it is or which, whatever criteria you're going to go by. And then go home and cull another 5 to 15 images. You want to end up with 10, 12, 15, 20 images maximum, right? So you need to now... Uh, Cull, and, and again, fewer is better as long as they are impactful images. The final steps. Now that you're down to those 10, 15, 20 images, print them. Whether you do it at home with your own printing or whether you go to a lab, print, some, print them on 8.5 by 11s if you can afford the paper and ink. And, and hopefully on the paper that you're going to do the final portfolio on. Or, if you want to save money, do two on a page and then cut it in half. Because what you need to do next is spread out those images on a floor or on a large table so you can start fiddling with them in terms of sequence and design. To tell my story, should this go before this one? Uh, is, is the design of the portfolio, uh, in the design of the portfolio, Will one image juxtaposed against another uh, work better? These are the things that you're going to be, do, be doing with these smaller numbers of images. We caution you to be judicious in terms of horizontal and vertical. If people have to turn your portfolio around to see a horizontal and then a full uh, page vertical, that's not going to work, folks. That's unwieldy. What you need to do is make it all horizontal or all vertical, or let's say you have a horizontal mostly portfolio, but you want to include a couple of pages of verticals. You can put two verticals on one page with a lot of white space in between. That looks awfully good. It's a design element. But think about that. Another thing we, we caution you about, it can happen. I'm going to show you an example of it when I show you a portfolio, but be careful if you're going to mix color and black and white. All right, that has to be carefully planned. Once you do that, um, let this whole thing sit for a week or more easily. Uh, then go back and assess it, and then let it sit again, reassess it. You might want to use your iPhone to just photograph the different portfolio, the different uh, arrangements that you make, so that you can go back and recreate them as you go through this rinse and repeat cycle. Then, several weeks later, you're going to bring in those prints and share this portfolio with your group. You want to know, did I achieve my goals? Repeat your goals. They should know them already. Does this, does this presentation actually achieve uh, my goals? Something I just want to say here, and that is that commit yourself to excellence. This is your art. This is, you're showing people who you are, where you are in your photography right now. So if things need to be, sh make sure these subjects that need to be sharp in your images are sharp. Make sure that, that it tells the story. Make sure everything in the frame belongs in the frame. Those kinds of things. Make sure that your art is really uh, uh, is be beautifully represented. I want to end with a couple of quotes here. This is uh, one of my mentors, Clay Scheinfeld, who passed away uh, many years ago. He was the uh, very famous environmental editor, 
And he said, the greatest passion on earth is neither love nor hate, but rather editing another person's work. So a bit of humor in here, but as you go through it, uh, not only be passionate about your own work, but also with your colleagues that you're working with, uh, really give them a, a, your full participation. Uh, every great photographer is either a great self-editor or they have someone who's a good editor. So keep that in mind uh, as, as, uh, as you go through this process. Self-editing, self-editing, important. Uh, I want to leave you with a, uh, one thing before I show you our, uh, the actual examples of portfolios from simple to, to more complex ones. Um, we offer our portfolio workshop here at Les Picker Fine Art Photography um, f twice a year. We limit it to just four people, so we have a nice tight group. Um, and then Bob and I will ask uh, about a month before. This is a three-day workshop, by the way. This starts on Friday, ends on Sunday afternoon. Um, very intense time, but prior to the workshop even uh, uh, meeting, uh, on that Friday, we ask you to send us 50 images. We give you very intensive feedback on that, uh, looking for what your goals are and what the focus of your story is. And then you bring to the workshop uh, a, a somewhat reduced number, 30, 40 images from that. And then we work together on creating a portfolio. And you're going to see in, in just a few minutes the actually what these portfolios uh, look like. So uh, right now we're going to switch to some showing you some presentation items and uh, with that I'll just end this portion of the workshop. All right, I'd like to start with the simplest portfolio first, and, um, uh, which has really a lot of good use to it. Uh, this is a, available on the web if you look up uh, photographic portfolios. By the way, please say photographic portfolios, because if you look up portfolios, you're going to find investment portfolios, leather portfolios, all sorts of stuff. So photographic portfolios, very simple design. Um, this is a paper product comes in different colors. You can order them online. I don't have a specific manufacturer, but there's, if you look at images, when you do your search, hit the image tab on the top of the Google search, uh, you'll see hundreds, literally hundreds of these portfolios. Uh, the thing I like about it is very simple, very quick to put together. Uh, it comes in eight and a half by 11. I think you can get it in 13 by 19. It unfolds very nicely. And it opens up, and this is um, this simple portfolio. Let me just get this down so you can see it. Um, this is uh, Canadian landscapes, for example. I did this a number of years ago. On the back is my the story that I want to tell people. Just an overlay sheet that gives information about the, the uh, images that you'll see in here, right? And uh, this is, um, uh, I'll, so this is a very simplified portfolio. This is done on, um, uh, on um, Juniper paper by Moab, a wonderful paper with a lot of DMAX in it, uh, and um, really picks up colors very well. So this is a, a simple, uh, a simple kind of portfolio. Again, this is this would be great when you come back from a vacation, let's say, and you want to put together a group of images that you want to show relatives, friends, whatever. Uh, inexpensive. Of course, you have to print it, so you have the paper and ink cost. But uh, really, a, a good way. And it has a window cut in the back here, so that you can take one of your better images and use that as the cover. Okay. So this is a simple. Very simple kind of treatment. Okay, now let me just get some questions. Um, oh, a good question again. When showing a portfolio of prints to a reviewer, do provide white gloves? Hold on for that question and I will answer that very shortly. All right. 
Um, the question, uh, Deborah asks, where is our November workshop uh, located? All our workshops are located here in our studio in Havre de Grace. Um, the portfolio workshop, as I said, is limited to four people. It's very intense, and we have lodging throughout uh, our, our historic community. There are some wonderful bed and breakfasts, historic ones, uh, that are available. Really a neat, neat place to uh, visit. Um, here's a, a simple portfolio. Uh, just It's a little bit more uh, upscale, if you will, than, our, than the one I just showed you. And this one... Uh, is, has a black border, so it's got a sort of elegance to it. When you open it up, it's got, I should, have, I should say, it has a, uh, a um, magnetic lip on it that allows it to, to make sure that everything stays in place. You open it up, and this is uh, a, a portfolio that I did uh, showing some images from a trip to the Antarctic that I took. So you can see it just lays in here, just, just some prints here. I'm sorry, we're out of focus a little bit here. I, I see. But we're, we're going to get there. Okay. Um, and it's a series of maybe eight or ten images taken uh, in the Antarctic and shows various aspects of uh, Antarctic. Again, all black and white because, as I said, mixing black and white and color doesn't necessarily work. But... This gives you an idea. It's a very, uh, uh, very, um, what do I want to say, a very elegant way to present without a lot of extras in it, if, you, if that's your point uh, here. So in other words, if let's say a, an editor is asking for a very specific assignment, uh, you can bring a collection of images that speak just to that assignment, and uh, <clears throat> this, a presentation like this would work very well. Okay, let me go through some questions. Um, let's see. What's the brand of the envelope that I just showed? This, this, um, this one here, I don't have a brand for it. I will try to get it and post it uh, in the, um, uh, in the uh, information, the description box below the YouTube video. Uh, but it will probably take me a day or two to do that. So uh, check back in a couple of days and we'll... We'll see how that how that goes. Um, yes, yeah, so so it's uh, Have a Grace, Maryland. We're located about uh, an hour, uh, forty five minutes north of Baltimore, Baltimore's airport, and we're located about uh, one hour south of Philadelphia Airport. So we're close to a lot of um, a lot of transportation hubs. Okay, uh, Reed uh, reminds us that glossy luster papers have a wider D-max than matte papers, absolutely, and Juniper is a uh, semi-gloss paper, and hence uh, I mentioned uh, that aspect of it. All right, I want to show you a, very, a really wonderful portfolio that is just recently available. It's uh, from Moab. Uh, it is known as the Flint Portfolio, the Moab Flint Portfolio. Again, it's a black Portfolio. This is a 13 by 19. It comes in 8.5 by 11 also. Uh, and when you open it up, again, this is also an Antarctic presentation. I want to show you this. So I have the title, the name, the year, the, 20, the end of last year I was in Antarctic for a month. And um, then when you open it, I'll try to do this with uh, keeping this so that you can see the whole thing and try to do it with one hand. So when you open it up, it's got two images here, um, black and white on one. And I like it because the seam lays pretty nicely. Uh, there's, it, it's kept in with a, with a um, plastic type of, of device. It's very easy to do, by the way. Very, very easy to do. And then I'm gonna violate the black and white color here for you because the beauty of this, it allows you to do panos. So I chose to do panos that are in color, right? And by the way, I'm touching it without gloves. In certain portfolios, I encourage you to use gloves. This I have double sprayed with Moab 
um, desert spray. There are very few sprays on the market that are that are good. We have tested several uh, sprays. Some of them spit. Uh, they they produce. You have to throw away your print. Uh, but desert spray really has a very fine mist and does a wonderful job. So here's a pan. Then we go back to black and white. So we have a couple of images here. And what I want to point out about uh, when I talked about sequencing and pairing, we had to make a decision with this pairing because we have this beautiful uh, streak of cloud coming down here uh, that I photographed. Uh, it's hard to say in the Antarctic when you do it because it's 24 hours of light. So it might have been 2 in the morning or, or 2 in the afternoon. But it comes down here and then it leads right into here. So we wanted a little bit of a flow, if you will, uh, on, on this. And then again, a second um, pano. Okay, and then again, we're back to black and white. Before we go further, let me ask you. Um, oh, someone mentioned thank you. Thank you, um, Ed. He says that Dane Creek Folios is one source for the small portfolios. Dane Creek Portfolios, and I think that is a uh, folios. That's, I think that's where we got it, but I'm, I'll check it. Um, this is the... Uh, so uh, this portfolio, again, is called the Flint. It's available on the Moab site, moabpaper.com. And if you go there, you'll see folios listed. Uh, let me finish up here. We're going to, this is another um, pano. We go back to a couple of icebergs here on the double, double uh, black and whites. And then uh, this image here, which I'm going to give you a little bit of backstory about it. Sorry to, if you're going to get, be bored by it, but uh, I was actually camping on an island in the, in the um, Antarctic, and uh, this, this was, uh, I know, was taken at approximately 2 in the morning. Uh, and all of a sudden, the ship right here uh, pulled into view, started to come in. It's a Norwegian research vessel, uh, three-masted, that came in beautifully uh, just at that time of day. So I was able to capture that uh, at early morning. And then, of course, at the end, I have a credit here for my, uh, with my name, Lester Picker, Fine Art Photography. This is a very, a very good, uh, sturdy housing that it's in. It's not plastic, it's a composite material. Um, and you can fit a number of images on here. I, this is a, a short one for demonstration, but you could easily fit 20 or more images on that. Okay, questions. Um, printed on both sides. Yes, I used a, a Moab paper uh, called Entrada, and, and this was uh, done on Entrada Natural. Entrada comes in three different types, Entrada Natural, Entrada White, uh, Bright it's called, Entrada Bright, and uh, Entrada Textured. So I'll show you a textured portfolio in the very next one. But um, this is, that was on Entrada Natural, and you can print on both sides of that paper. So it's a wonderful paper. Um, it's a matte paper, but it has incredible color rendition. We just love it, I have to tell you. We use it quite a bit. All right, so that answers that. Now I'm going to show you one, um, which is now we're in the sort of upscale aspect of portfolios. So this portfolio is the portfolio that people leave our workshop with, uh, of course, of their, with their own photography. This is not cardboard. This is actually wood. As you can hear, it's covered with, um, uh, custom covered with a cloth material that we special order. And it has a well in it that's carved in here. This is not on top of this. This is actually sunk into a well. So it's nice and even, and we put the, uh, our client's best image from the portfolio right on there. They self-select which one that'll be. So let's open it and take a look inside. And when you open it, here come the gloves, right? So we have uh, a set of gloves in here because we encourage people when they use this portfolio to use gloves. This is something that you would present to an art director 
a gallerist, a gallery owner will want to see this because this is how they're going to be selling your prints, of course, in a larger size on a wall, but we have sold these as a collection, as a portfolio collection. So we, uh, we create this all, we manufacture it all here while you're at the workshop, um, and we have uh, the ribbons just as an added dressing. The, this is printed, as I'll show you that in a moment, on a, an incredible paper that we love dearly. So the title page is here. Here's the uh, Canada landscape. So I'm focusing this, per this portfolio on Canada landscapes. And, and as I mentioned, I won the Best Travel Photographer for the uh, Northern Lights Award. Um, and this was done at the, for the awards ceremony. Uh, uh, it, it was not submitted as part of that, um, of that award. And now when you open it up, what we've done is Here's the actual print, right, in this case. And what Bob has done is created a, a, a screen masterpiece. This is on vellum paper, which t gives the title of the image as well as the, um, uh, it, it's, it's graded so that only this top can fit this particular uh, image. So it's, very specific. It, it, it really dresses up the portfolio quite nicely. Here's one of, um, and I want to show you this because this is um, Entrada rag textured, and I wanted to give you an idea of the way that it renders color. It's just spectacular. Okay, nice deep blacks, even though it's a matte paper. Uh, it, it really, it really is gives a, a, a credible presentation. Let's take a look at the last one. I mean, I'm not the last one. There are many in here, but I'm not going to spend too much time on it. But another way, sunrise over Wedge Pond. I love Wedge Pond every time I go to the Canadian Rockies. Um, so, so again, it picks up all the colors you you want uh, really beautifully. Let me go to a question now. Um, Let's see, which more papers am I using? I explained that. Um, spraying protects the prints, well worth the time. Absolutely, folks. Now, I am, this is a demonstration portfolio, so I am not using gloves. I'm violating my own uh, rules, so to speak, but I have double sprayed these, uh, so that means four coats, one horizontally and one vertically, that's one coat, and then I do it again, two coats, but even so, I'm only, handling these with my bare hands because um, um, I use this as a demo portfolio. Uh, I want to, one thing, another thing I want to point out is this, the uh, Entrada texture has such a gorgeous feel to it, a sensuality that is absolutely incredible. Um, you can, and people, when you show it to an art director, they're going to be quite impressed. It's a, it's a beautiful paper. But notice the subtle tonalities it's able to pick up. I'm not sure you can see it well uh, in this image, uh, you know, uh, coming through YouTube. But it, it has picked up the subtle blue tones in the mountain from the minerals that are, that are there. This is in the Yukon. Uh, this is uh, Tombstone Mountain in the Yukon Territory. Uh, I lead a trip there every year, by the way, an 11-day trip. And um, if you haven't been to the Yukon, let me tell you, you really should think about going, it is, uh, whether with me or someone else, it's spectacular, a really spectacular place. So, again, this is a, you know, a dress your portfolio, but I want to show you what some clients have done with their portfolios. Uh, this this, port this uh, workshop that produced this portfolio was attended by uh, a wonderful photographer in New York City by the name of Lou Rothman, who's a retired uh, radiologist. And Lou has been photographing New York City for probably 50 or more years. And he has an exquisite collection of images. So we encourage our clients to produce these smaller volumes, 8.5 by 11 paper. And these have a spine on them, which, uh, so you can put them in a bookcase and, and uh, have us, you know, from each of you, the countries you travel to, or perhaps, as someone mentioned, a wildlife collection, uh, a landscape collection, etc. Easy to pull off your bookshelf. Uh, it still has the sunken well in the front. And then lose 
work, which is truly spectacular. He has New York abstractions, he calls it. He has his, uh, his statement uh, on the back. And then he has uh, this, his series of images with, his, with the screen here. And uh, this is all uh, printed on uh, Moab uh, Juniper, which is a semi-gloss paper. Beautifully takes black and white with deep, deep, deep blacks and uh, lots of tonality in the image. So uh, Lou went ahead and took this into a, um, uh, to a gallery and has a, uh, had a wonderful gallery exhibition. And then Lou has published a book as a result of this on New York abstractions that is truly an amazing work of art. So I think that you should, um, that, that's another example I think of how uh, to use a portfolio to your advantage, if you will. Let me get some more questions here. What's the size of your portfolio? Well, uh, this one is eight and a half by 11. I mean, the inside, the paper inside is eight and a half by 11. Uh, this one is for 13 by 19 prints. We find that anything larger than that becomes unwieldy. If you're going to a gallery, uh, then yes, you can, you can go ahead and, and um, use, have some larger ones, but you wouldn't use a box like this. You'd have it in a, in, in a uh, artist's portfolio that you carry. But, but 13 by 19 will give any gallerist a good idea of your work and the pride you take in printing it. So I'll leave this here for a moment, and I'll leave Lou's here. Uh, OK, what else? Um, uh, let's see. The uh, Entrada is a matte paper. Yes, Juniper is a semi-gloss Barida paper. Um, OK, these are all in landscape format. What about vertical images? Well, uh, as I said before, you can do an all-vertical portfolio, and it would just open up like a book. Instead of like this, it would just open up this way. Uh, same thing with the larger size. But if you're going to combine both into one portfolio, as I mentioned, what you would want to do is have your people are thumbing through and to keep it in horizontal orientation, even though they're vertical prints, you would print the maybe two prints here with a lot of nice space in between them, white space all around. So it wouldn't be the same as looking at that vertical print this way, of course, but it's another way, it's a design element, we call it, and that can work very, very well. So I don't want to minimize it. It's a, it's a wonderful solution, uh, but mixing them so that you, a person has to rotate it would not be a good idea. All right, I gave the size of the portfolios. Um, the, um, uh, I, I also have to say, I, we are sponsored by Moab, but let me tell you folks, anyone who knows my work knows that we don't have to do that. Uh, we've tried dozens and dozens of papers, and there are other good papers out there. I don't, I don't deny that. We love working with Moab. Part of the reason is their profiles are dead on. Uh, we know if we're going to go from one batch to another batch, there's consistency with the papers, but they, are, they also, the profiles are profiles that we, we know we're going to get results that we want. What we see on our screen is going to come out, uh, on a monitor will come out on the paper. So we love that. Um, let's see. Um, uh, someone named Jim Graham. I don't know. Jim. Oh, hi, Jim. I'm just teasing you. But Jim, Jim Graham is another Moab master photographer. And boy, if you haven't seen his work, please go to G Jim Graham's web, look him up on the web and, and uh, take a look at his work. Spectacular work uh, by Jim. Uh, he, he says, um, so the vellum we use is an inkjet type vellum. Uh, we, we went through a lot of different vellums, by the way, and we found that the one offered by Mohawk, uh, in New York State, Mohawk uh, Papers is the vellum that we like to use. It it's, um, takes ink beautifully. Uh, one thing about vellum that you have to be aware of is that if you put a lot of ink on it, on one side it will curl um, tr toward the side of the ink. 
So you, sometimes you may have to want to print on the back side of it so that it lays, uh, it, when you lay it down, it'll start to go flat. Um, uh, let's see, it's very rare today, Richard says, for a gallery to accept solicitations. Uh, wouldn't love to know how Lou walked in somewhere and just got a show. Uh, you'd have to ask Lou. Sorry about that, but he's, uh, he's um, I don't know how, how he was able to do that. But usually if you make an appointment, send in your images in advance, that, that, that will tend to work. And um, let's see, uh, what else do we have here? What brand of printers do you use? So in our studio, we have four large format printers. We have two Canon Pro 1000s, ProGraph 1000s, um, a Canon ProGraph 2000, which prints 24 inches, and a Canon ProGraph 4000, which prints 44 inches wide. Um, the Pro 1000s print up to 17 inches wide, which, by the way, folks, I have to tell you, I think that's the best print bargain out there, but it, it is, um, you can print 17 by 22s with that printer, but when you frame a 17 by 22, you end up with a really good size print. It looks great on a wall. So I wouldn't begrudge uh, a 17 inch printer. I think that'll stand you in good stead, stead for years. Um, let's see. Um, so that answers what brand of printers. Um, what paper did Lou use for his black and white? For this particular one, he used Juniper. Uh, that's Moab, uh, Juniper Barida paper, excellent paper, great for, um, to make colors pop, uh, has a very, very deep D-Max. I think you would find that uh, to be an excellent paper for specific use. Question, what is the name of the spray you use to spray your prints? Well, um, take a look, uh, go on to the Moab site or go to b &H or go to Adorama, any of those, and uh, you'll find that you have, um, it's, the, it's called Moab Desert Spray, and uh, it, is, it is really a, a wonderful spray. Bob's looking for some. Bob, it's in the, uh, it's in the closet there. Yeah. Okay, so uh, excuse that, but we're, we're trying to juggle a few things here. So Moab uh, Desert Spray, and uh, uh, hopefully Bob will find it. It's right in front. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so there's a desert, it's called Desert Varnish, and whoops, sorry, Desert, let me see if I can get that correct. Can you see that? Okay, so it's Desert Varnish, and a can like this will last many, many prints. It's a wonderful product. You spray it on, you wait four minutes, then you do the second coat or the second pass, um, wait four minutes between, so it, it's a fast operation, but please wear a mask. Uh, we, I, we have a rebreather mask that we use for any of these, uh, you know, products that have volatile. An N95? Yeah, you could try an N95. Here, there you go. When, when they become available. Don't you uh, have a video on that, Les? Yeah, I actually have a little, little vignette video. It lasts maybe a minute. I'm showing how to use it properly. A lot of people, when they use it, uh, a spray, they tend to rotate their wrist around as they spray. Uh, you should not do that. Uh, you should hold your wrist rigid and just go along the length of the, of the image uh, and, you know, overlapping by 50% each time and then you let it dry. But uh, by, when you rotate your wrist, it tends to put more in the center as you're going back than on the edges and you can get drips happening in the center. That's not good. Okay. Uh, let me see, any other um, questions here? Do you sign individual images or the mat? Um, it, it really uh, depends. I, I tend to sign on the mat. I don't like to destroy the image itself. But on the back of the print, I sign the back of the print. Um, it's called obverse signing. I, I do the obverse side and I sign it. And if the print, of course, is a uh, limited edition, then I will number it also. Um, let's see, Do you, should you provide an artist statement with a portfolio review and how long should it be? Um, the length of your artist statements can vary. Take a look at Lou's. 
In this case, Lou is a man of few words and um, lots of x-rays, but few words. So he's got a very small uh, uh, statement, if you will, of work. And if you take a look at mine, for this particular portfolio, usually I, I do a fairly small one, but uh, where did I put that now? Here it is. But in this one, it's uh, fairly lengthy. Right? So, but generally, n not more than a few paragraphs, four or five paragraphs should do it. I think that, that's a good, a good amount for a portfolio. Um, yeah, and as, uh, as uh, Moab sent a note here, desert varnish is for protecting matte papers. I should have said that. Not, don't spray it on your glossies or your uh, semi-gloss papers. Uh, matte papers works terrifically. Um, let's see. Uh, does the spray yellow over time? We have never found that to be the case. I, I can't tell you we haven't done exhaustive studies on it, but uh, maybe the folks from Moab who are watching can comment on that. We have had it in all sorts of conditions. We've never seen any kind of yellowing uh, occur. Um, uh, let's see. Reed, thanks for your uh, th thanks for your comment, but I'm not going to sing it. But he does say, "Staying alive, staying alive with my N95." Ooh, ooh. So I'm going to spare you all by not singing it. Um, do you sell limited editions of your prints or your portfolios? Yes, we do. Um, uh, 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 yes, and um, all, all of those uh, the portfolios are really a wonderful gift. Um, we gave uh, we, we I shouldn't say gave we we. Um, a board of directors for a client, uh, which is a major hospital, um, actually bought 30 uh, portfolios to give to their board of directors. Uh, th those were portfolios specific to the Baltimore uh, community, not, not uh, uh, the landscapes that you see here. Um, how is the vellum attached to the back of the print? The vellum is not attached to the print. The vellum is uh, separate from the print. So that, here I'll show you a different image I haven't seen before. So here is, um, so here's an image and the vellum is separate from it. All right, so the image is here, vellum separate from it, but still by having the screening happen, it can, it, it, uh, it, it, it links it to the image, so to speak, uh, because it can only fit that particular image. All right? Uh, one thing about vellum, be very careful. It, it crinkles easily. Don't let it get caught somewhere or bent, because once that happens, you have to throw it away. It is, it is uh, I won't say delicate, but it, it can uh, crinkle, and then you can't really use it. Um, what about protective varnish instead of spray? I'm assuming, uh, I'm assuming, Stan, that you mean uh, where you roll it on. I have a, a two-part video on rolling uh, varnish on canvas. So we do roll varnish on, a, on canvas, but we don't do it on our prints. I'm assuming you can do it, but we find the desert spray to be so effective for us that we, I don't take the chance of rolling uh, my prints with varnish. But you, not, not to name names less, but we have tested desert varnish versus other similar sprays yes. and the other ones are absolute. They change the print immensely. Yes. Uh, for those of you, I'm hoping you heard Bob, um, who's behind the camera, but we did a, uh, for over a period of months, we, we tested m multiple sprays under different conditions. And I actually have the results. I show people at our print workshops and at our portfolio workshops. Um, we actually, so we tested it, and some of these sprays on the market are absolutely horrible. They will actually damage your print. So you have to be very careful. So there, there are, we recommend the, the desert, um, the Moab uh, desert uh, varnish because um, the spray pattern is very, very light. Um, so you, the, the chances of overspraying are almost non-existent. Uh, as long as you, you know, move at a steady pace, you don't want to stay in one place uh, for any length of time. So literally, you're going this fast, 
right across the the uh, the, the uh, print. Okay. Um, uh, let's see. Is there an ICC profile for the vellum? There is not. Um, sRGB works fine. Yeah. So as Bob points out, just a regular sRGB profile will work fine on it. Again, it's not the master work, it's just a dressing. This is a, you know, uh, to upscale your portfolios, but you don't have to um, worry about that. So an sRGB profile is fine. Um, Moab has a YouTube video on printing on both sides of the paper, I'm told, so you might want to look there. Oh. Just one comment on the sRGB profile. The only reason that's true is because that vellum is very neutral. It doesn't have optical brighteners. It doesn't have any tone to it at all. It's very neutral. Good. I think uh, that was heard. I, I'm looking at the, uh, the sound quality, so I think people heard that. Um, the, a good question. Uh, when should I use glass when framing a print? Well, look. There are different framing options available today. In fact, today we have more framing options than ever before. And new ones are coming out all the time with new, with new products like the, like the Flint portfolio that, that has that really rigid cover. Um, if you're going to be displaying, there's the traditional print, which is frame behind glass, uh, and, and you hang it up on a wall, it's then, you know, of course it's framed, you hang it up, and, and that's fine. We also do a kind of a, uh, of a display which is called open framed. We teach it here in our workshop how to do it, but uh, in other words, we actually make them here in our workshop. But um, the, the fact is that it doesn't need to be framed, but in that case, you must make sure to have at least two coats of of uh, desert spray on it uh, to protect it. It gives it some UV protection and some fingerprint smudge protection. So we've had a, we have an image here in our studio uh, that has been up for, what did we just say, about five years. And uh, there's no degradation that we see whatsoever. Uh, it's been touched, uh, looked at, been out in the open with no glass uh, in front of it. So, so it really depends upon the look you're looking for, um, some people put it behind plexiglass, some behind museum quality glass. Uh, there's all sorts of options, but I think it really depends on how you prefer to uh, show it, to exhibit your, your work. Um, can you spray on double-sided paper or will it affect the image? No, spray on both sides, of course. In this portfolio that I showed you here, That I sprayed on both sides. So uh, I went through and sprayed everything on one side. I'm sorry about to switch it on you so quickly, but yeah, I sprayed everything on one side and then I flipped over and sprayed all the color sides. So it's, uh, yeah, go ahead and do that. You can spray both sides, no problem. All right, um, what else? Uh, yeah, and Trada is double-sided. I want to I want to tell you, uh, uh, Moab um, Juniper uh, Brighter Paper is not double-sided. You can only print on one side. Uh, so uh, the same same thing uh, is true for a couple of other of the of the Moab papers. It really depends. Let me see what else is on here. Um, let's see. Can I spray the desert varnish over gloss medium acrylic to dull it down? Uh, I, I, we haven't tried that, so I really can't say one way or the other. But I do know people who roll uh, a, a flattener on their images to dull it down. So here's what I'd like you to do. Take a look at my part two of the video that I have on doing canvas. Because what I do in that is I, I coat it first with a gloss varnish, and then the final coat is, is, a, is a matte varnish that dulls the, the image down a little bit. Um, it just takes the gloss off because I don't like light reflections on it too much. So if you would, take a look at that. I think that'll answer uh, your question, at least partially. Um, 
Let me see. I'm trying to see what else here. Uh, let's see. Burger statement. Okay. All right. So I think that's about it, folks. I hope that um, I've challenged you. I hope that I've given you some insights, hopefully, uh, some tips that you can use in creating your own portfolios. And um, I just uh, wish you the best. You can always write to me if you have other questions to, uh, about the, um, uh, any of this process. And uh, if I may not be able to answer you right away. Sometimes I'm traveling, although now, not nowadays, so this would be a good time. But otherwise, uh, thank you so much for listening. And until the next time, stay tuned for the next Moab video.